Hi folks, Mr. Ackerman here. Thanks for watching. The topic of today's video is called triptychs. Uh, a triptych is a way of displaying a piece of art, in this case photos, in threes. So as you can see in this photo here, I've taken three separate images and I've pasted them on a white background and I'm displaying them like this. Uh, they have a common theme. They are detail photos from around our school. One of them shows the ivy vines in the fall when they change color and the light hits them at an angle that I found interesting. Another was a crumbling part of the floor that had been exposed, made an interesting pattern. And the last one was some water droplets on a leaf just outside the Bayview entrance that caught my eye. And I wanted to show them in this way because it's kind of my way of saying, hey everybody, take a look at some of the interesting details around our building that you might not normally notice. Another triptych that I created for today's video is this one here, which shows a place that I visited back in 2006. It's called Schwabacher Landing. It's in Grand Teton National Park in Wyoming, a beautiful place. Uh, I went there for sunset and I was uh, rewarded with this beautiful sky here and a nice reflection in the river. And I thought it might be fun to take the original photo and break it into three parts. Here's the original, which is interesting enough on its own, but again, here's another way to display it. And I also added a little title at the bottom, so I'll show you how to do that. Anyway, let's get started with the original images in the first triptych I showed you. So starting with uh, crumbling floor, which is this image, first thing I want you to do is go file, and you're going to get, uh, sorry, not file, but rather image, and we want image size. And what's going to come up over here is the pixel size coming out of your camera, if, assuming it's an uncropped image. I've got about 2,500 pixels across by about 3,200 pixels or 3,300 pixels vertical. And you just gotta make a mental note of that number. I'm gonna hit cancel. And I go to, the, go to the other image here. I'm gonna do the same thing, image, image size. And it's also about 2,500 across, this time by 3,200 deep. And then finally, this one here, image, image size, and it's about 3,000. So I want you to add these all up in your mind just briefly. The horizontal is 3,000 here. The other two were around 2,500. That's a total of 8,000 pixels. And I've got to fit them onto a white background that's a little bit bigger. So if these add up to about 8,000, I'm probably going to want to leave something like maybe 10,000 to give plenty of space to move stuff around. Vertically, the biggest one I think is this, if I remember, but 4,000. So maybe I'll go 5,000. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go File, New, and I'm going to create a new custom background image. So go here, and on the width here, set your width. What did we say? We're going to do 10,000 pixels and a height of about 5,000 pixels. You can leave the resolution at 300. You want your background maybe to be white, or you can change that. Those, that's up to you. I'm going to go with white. So here we go, create, and there it is. And if I go image, image size, it's going to show that this is 10,000 by 5,000, which should fit the images that I want to put in there. So what do you do next? Well, find the first image. Let's say we want to start with crumbling floor. So here it is. And what I'm going to do is select all. And you see the marching ants go around here. Then I'm going to go edit. I'm going to copy this. Now I'm going to go to my new untitled white background and I'm going to paste. So edit, paste, and boom, it's just going to appear and it's going to appear over here as a new layer. And if you use the move tool right over here, the shortcut is V for that, you can just pick this up and move it around and you'll notice if you center it up, you get these lines at the top and through the middle that show you you're centered. So here's my first image, I'm going to leave it there. My next one, maybe I'm going to put in raindrops on a leaf. So again, select all, which is control or command A, copy, which is command or control C. And then I go back over here, I'm using shortcuts by the way, because it's a lot faster. And paste is control or command V. And now it's a layer here. And if I move it around, now I know I'm perfectly centered. because so I got the vertical uh, pink line and the horizontal pink line. And I'm also lined up with this image here as you can see by these lines that come here and there. I'm going to go to my last one, which is the sunshine on ivy. Copy using 
shortcuts, uh, sorry, select all, command A or control A, command or control C to copy, and then over here, command or control V to paste. And now, you see, we got a little bit of a problem, which is that this image is actually bigger coming out of the camera, or maybe it wasn't cropped as much than mm. these. So I'm gonna click on this one, make sure this layer is selected, and I'm gonna go to, what I have to do is called a transform. The shortcut is control or command T. And if you go into, I just have to find this because I don't know exactly where it is. There we go. Free transform under the edit menu, command or control T. And once I select that, it's got these little corners here. Now I want to scale this. So I, I, like I don't want to do this or it gets kind of ugly. Uh, control or command Z to go back a step. So what you got to do is hold a corner, find a corner, hold down your shift key and drag inward. And that will scale everything properly. And then you can just line this up beside your other one. Shift click on a corner until these guys are the same size. And you can see they're almost the same size, needs to be a little bit bigger. Let's see if I can line them up now. That's pretty close. I'm gonna leave it there because I think you get the idea. Once you're done with this, you have to hit return or enter, or you can click the check up here, and that will now give you your image to the size that you want. So once again, lining things up, make sure we're lined up there, that's good. Make sure this guy is centered up, that's good. Make sure this one is lined up. And if you get these to just the perfect amount of spacing, you'll see that in the middle here, it will tell you based on the numbers that everything is evenly distributed. So now I can step back and look and see if I like this image. I think I want them a little bit closer. So I'm gonna click on this one. You see it highlighted the layer there. I'm gonna move it in a bit. This guy is still centered, so that's fine. And this one here needs to come in when it's the right distance and everything matches. Photoshop will tell me. I'm happier with this, but there's a lot of extra white space around the edge, so maybe I'm gonna crop make sure there's nothing written in here clear hit the clear button so that when you crop you don't you're not cropping to a certain ratio that you might not want center this up however you want looks good hit enter and now just go to the move tool one more time adjust these guys so everything is even make sure this one's in the middle there we go centered up perfect and there you go there's your triptych. You've got your layers. I should point out, your image should be edited beforehand. You don't want to be editing them now. So get all of your editing done ahead of time and then put them into this and you've got yourself this kind of triptych. Now, the other kind of triptych involves taking one image and splitting it into three. I'm going to show you how to do that. So the first thing we're going to do is use a trick that Photoshop has and I believe it's under view. Yep. You're gonna to go to new guide layout over here and watch what this does, it's kind of cool. You tell it how many columns you want. We're doing a triptych, so we want three, and it's gonna split the image perfectly into three. If you wanted more, you would just change that number, or if you wanted two, you could change it, and so on. If you wanted to slice the image horizontally, you would unclick columns and you would use rows. Click OK, and now you can see this. So the next thing I need to do is I'm gonna grab my selection tool over here. This is the rectangular marquee tool. And I'm just gonna drag out the corners, or drag out and select this first image. And then I'm gonna control C to copy. I'm gonna create a new, uh, a new, and actually, sorry, one, one thing I should do, I should backtrack a little bit. Let's control D, deselect, or just under select go like this for a moment. I should find out what the image size is to begin with so I can create my white background layer. So we go image, image size, and I see that it's about 38, 3900 across and 2600 down. So maybe I'll go something like 4500 by 3000. So let's go file, new, and what did I say, width, 4500, Vertically, 3,000, resolution 300, white background, create. Okay, now back to the original, which is already divided. Pick the marquee tool, oops, and click out and drag. Photoshop will tell you with these pink guides 
whether you've got everything lined up properly. Mm -hmm. Control or Command C to copy, and then onto here, Command or Control V to paste. And this was the first one, so get your Move tool up here and drag this over to the side. Now back to the original here. Now the rectangular marquee tool. I have to deselect what's already selected. And now back to the marquee tool, reselect or select to begin with this one. And then Control or Command C to copy. And then Control or Command V to paste. Back to the original here. Uh, Control or Command D to deselect. And now begin the final selection like this. Good. Copy it and paste it. And just get the move tool again and move this one over. And it's that easy. All right. Now, if you want to put some writing at the bottom, like a title, then what you're going to have to do is move each of these higher. So click there, move this higher, make sure they're lining up. And then what you can do is use the text tool over here, horizontal type, and just click down here. Make sure the color of your font is going to be visible, so it should be something like black. You can select any color here that you want. And I'm going to type in here something like Schwabacher Landing Grand Teton National Park Wyoming 2006. And you can change your fonts and all that. But what I would like to do is actually move this into the middle. So again, grab the Move tool. And you'll notice that this has come up as a new layer in the, uh, in the Layers palette there. So click and drag, move this over. Again, those guides are going to help you center everything up. And you're done. Let's make this a little bit bigger so you can see. So there's my final product there. Make this a little bit bigger. Here's my final product here. All right, one last thing. These are images with layers, and they are quite large. They contain a lot of information. So first thing we're going to do is file, and we're going to save these and give them a name. So I might call this uh, thornley.psd. It's going to be saved as a Photoshop image with layers, so I can change it at a later date, maximize compatibility. And then I also want to save this as, so file, save as a JPEG, because the PSD is going to be huge. So go down here change it to JPEG, click Save, select the size you want. Remember to, to look over here. Usually it'll tell you how big the image is going to be. If I click OK with maximum uh, image quality, and now I just go and find this. Let's see, where is it? Thornley.jpg. You can see it's 18 megs, the JPEG, but the PSD was 150 megs. That is massive. So we definitely want to go with this. And I think you could argue that 18 megs is too big for this. So maybe I'm going to go back here, file, save as, and make it a JPEG, but something a little bit smaller. It says there already is one, of course. I should have known that. So call this Thornley Small, because it's going to be a smaller size. I'm going to drag that all the way down. Maybe quality level 8 is going to be good. Let me check. Uh, where is Thornley Small? It should be coming in there. There it is and it's 4.6 megs. Perfect. All right, thanks for watching. Grab a bunch of your images, give it a try, and I'll be happy to look at what you've got in class. Have a good day, everyone.